This tropical wave will be heading toward the Caribbean over the next 72 hours, but what happens after this is where things get interesting, because this is only one of several important weather patterns to watch in the tropics over the next couple weeks. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on in the tropics, but first, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more weather updates. So here's a live view of the Atlantic satellite imagery, and you can see there's this tropical wave right here is what we're watching, particularly as it heads towards the Caribbean over the next couple days. And it's a pretty well-organized tropical wave. And then there's actually other tropical waves behind it. So those are definitely going to be interesting to watch. But this one out in front is the main one we're watching right now. And then there's also an upper-level low right here. I would think that it would actually steer the tropical wave to the northwest, but also this upper level low is backing up. So as it's backing up, that'll allow the tropical wave to move a bit further west. So it is expected to move into the Caribbean in the next couple days. It does have a 10% chance of turning into a tropical cyclone from the NHC. And they're saying that environmental conditions are marginally conducive for development during the next day or two. And by the middle of the week, it's expected to become unfavorable for tropical development. Interestingly enough, the GEFS ensembles are taking it into the Caribbean, but also show that it could be a tropical depression, potentially. And the, the intensity guidance is showing that it could actually reach tropical storm strength within 24 hours and then possibly become a, a pretty strong tropical storm. That's different. I mean... That's interesting, but the other models are not really showing much development. So we'll have to see what these models are looking at since it doesn't look that favorable for this to organize into a tropical system, but you never know. It's like a barrel last year, how it was just a tropical wave and eh, not really going to develop, but then it did and it rapidly intensified. Here's a look at the GFS model to start with, and this actually does become a organized area of low pressure apparently by tomorrow but then as it heads towards the caribbean it definitely loses that organization fades away and turns into just pretty much a bunch of heavy rain over the islands in the caribbean but then you have another tropical wave behind it that tries to do something it does actually tr try to become an area of low pressure and it does stay organized enough as it reaches the leeward islands and the lesser antilles then after that it doesn't really look like there's too much tropical development happening in the atlantic through the end of july but notice there's actually a lot of stuff going on in the eastern pacific and we'll look at that a bit later but the thing is that's going to be a big problem for this tropical wave is the increasing shear right now the tropical wave is in a low shear environment but as it heads westward it does have an opportunity to stay in that low shear environment for another couple days, but then there's a lot of shear over the Caribbean, and then that upper level low pressure system is producing shear too. Now, as this backs up, that that shear will diminish a little bit, but still the shear of the Caribbean isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And here's a look at the, the GFS model showing the wind shear is definitely going to be a problem over the next 72 hours it it starts off in a low shear environment for that tropical wave but then but then it really gets sheared apart as it goes into the caribbean with 30 to 50 knots of wind shear that's definitely a problem and then the tropical wave that happens after that could by july 28th it's showing maybe has a little more potential because that shear does look like it's it's dropped down a little bit only perhaps only 20 knots of wind shear, which is still not favorable, but it's not as extreme as what's happening over the next couple days. And there's also the dry air is going to be a problem. Right now you can see definitely a lot of a lot of dry air in place over the over the tropical Atlantic. Saharan dust, definitely a, a, a problem for tropical development. And then it backs off later this week, but then looks like it comes back behind the second tropical wave going into July 28th and then even all the way into August 1st potentially still a lot of dry air over 
the main development region, part of the Atlantic. Now, here's a look at the, what the Euro model is showing. Not a, a very organized tropical wave moving into the Caribbean around Tuesday or Wednesday, but just more so just a lot of rain. And then that second tropical wave does have some potential going into July 25th or so, but that fades away too. It's not really showing a lot of tropical development, except then notice this area right here. I think that's actually that tropical wave disappears and then organizes again further north, which actually there are very warm sea surface temperatures in that region around Bermuda, so it could have potential to to try and, and organize up there. It does try to become a low pressure system before it gets pulled north into maybe more of a extra tropical frontal system. But other than that, not much tropical activity expected from the Euro model going all the way into August 4th, except for that. The GEFS ensembles are showing, of course, potential for this, this tropical wave moving into the Caribbean on Tuesday going into Wednesday. And then they're also showing that tropical wave actually a couple of tropical waves behind the in, uh, the initial one. Then also, notice they're showing potentially more tropical development possible, or at least a low-pressure system trying to organize off the Gulf Coast again, moving off the, the southeast coast of the U.S., going back over the Gulf Coast. That could be Invest 93L coming back. So that that would be interesting to see if that's able to happen. I don't think it's going to necessarily turn into a tropical storm necessarily, but definitely bringing in more rain back to the Gulf Coast once again. So that's going to be something to watch too. And then other than that, that's pretty much it from the GEFS ensembles in terms of tropical development in the Atlantic. But of course, the Eastern Pacific is also something to watch. Because here's a look at the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook from the Climate Prediction Center showing week two, July 23rd to July 29th. They're not expecting any tropical cyclone development, or at least they weren't as of July 15th. Last Tuesday they posted this. And then for week three, July 30th to August 5th, notice they do have a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific. So... That'll be something to watch. Not really expected to impact land, but just tropical activity going on. Here's a look at the MJO. Right now, it's still unfavorable across across the western part of the Atlantic especially, but notice over Africa, it's unfavorable, but we're still seeing tropical waves. But imagine if it was favorable over Africa, we'd probably be seeing a lot more intense tropical waves and seeing them more frequently. But yeah, uh, still unfavorable around right now, July 20th, then even in the next five days, July 25th. But notice the favorable area is starting to move eastward, and it will be starting to get favorable going into the July 30th to August 4th time frame. And then after that, it goes neutral again, but we'll have, definitely have to watch this favorable time frame from the MJO around July 30th and even into August 4th to see if See if we start getting more tropical activity happening because the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic are definitely favorable for for tropical cyclones to form and, and strengthen pretty readily. And even the main development region is definitely heating up. We're starting to see those low to mid 80s really heating up in there. But then still the Gulf is is pretty much the warmest part of the Atlantic besides also off the east coast of the U.S., around Bermuda, you see these sea surface temperatures in the mid-80s. And then we're even seeing 80-degree water temperatures extending all the way up to off the coast of New Jersey, all the way up past 40 degrees north. So that's that's pretty significant to see these highly above average sea surface temperatures. And also, the upper ocean heat content is very impressive. Not so much for the main development region, but for the Caribbean, parts of the Gulf, and the southwestern Atlantic, even the central subtropical Atlantic, seeing a lot of ocean heat content. This is actually very above average for this region. But also, uh, there's some tropical activity expected to happen in the eastern Pacific, according to the latest forecast models. Here's a look at the GFS model showing 
around July 26th, we start seeing a tropical system trying to get going here off the coast of Central America. And some of that is going to be all that moisture just being pushed further west, not really doing anything in the Caribbean, just getting pushed further west into the Eastern Pacific. Here's a look at what happens going into July 27th and July 28th. This definitely starts strengthening. It gets all the way down to potentially a 970 millibar Category 2 hurricane around July 30th. According to that run of the GFS model, the newest run of the GFS model is like, wow, this is even stronger on, on that run, showing a 961 millibar Category 3 hurricane. And it actually got all the way down. This, this really rapidly intensifies it even faster. This is forming around July 26th, but then it's already a hurricane by July 27th, and then potentially a major hurricane getting all the way down to like 958 millibars, 955 millibars around July 29th. So definitely a Category 3 or even potentially a Category 4 major hurricane expected in the Eastern Pacific. And it's not really affecting land, but it is expected to bring tropical moisture surging pretty far northward from the hurricane and just tropical moisture in general reaching the southwestern U.S. with with heavy rain expected potentially in Arizona around this time frame if if this scenario actually happens. And then this goes pretty far north still as a 978 millibar hurricane moving towards California. Of course, it'll dissipate before it gets there, but still bringing that moisture pretty far north into the southwestern U.S. So that's pretty much what's happening in the tropics. But things are very likely to heat up in the Atlantic, of course, as we go into August. That's pretty much expected based on, of course, climatology and just things are slowly getting more favorable because we're starting to see those tropical waves moving in with, with potential opportunities for development. So even though we're not necessarily seeing any tropical s storms just yet coming from the main development region, that's on the way in the next month or so as we go into August. In terms of any severe weather across the U.S. right now, uh, today there there is a day one slight risk, actually three of them for day one, and there's actually three days of slight risks. So there is some pretty interesting stuff going on. We have a slight risk of severe weather that goes from Montana all the way down to northwestern Kansas, another slight risk that goes across the Ohio Valley and another across the northeast. The one across the Dakotas goes with a 5% chance of tornadoes for South Dakota and northern Nebraska, a 15% chance of wind in all of these slight risks, and then a 15% chance of significant hail going from southeastern Montana all the way into Nebraska. Day two, a small slight risk across Montana, 2% chance of tornadoes, 5 to 15% chance of damaging winds, 15% chance of large hail over Montana, and then a day three slight risk over Minnesota, basically, and that's a 15% chance of severe weather. So yeah, that's pretty much what's happening in terms of the severe weather, and also we looked at the tropics, and so yeah, just definitely some interesting weather patterns to watch over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.